Hey, hey, hey. Hello, hello. Good evening, good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. So here we are once again, ready to get started. And uh, tonight we are basically going to be um, dealing with our second last, well, no, it's not the second last, sorry. It's our last week, starting our last week and well, getting close to the end of this course. So um, it has been great. As I said last week, you know, it has been an amazing experience working with you guys. And uh, yeah, reaching this point, um, I hope that, you know, we have been able to learn something. We have been able to um, to gather some some information, some good information. So yeah, in my case, it has been such an honor, you know, working with you um, thus far. And well, we'll see. We'll see where this takes us. Um, so yeah, for now, you know, it um we have to continue on going. And for this evening, the topics that we're gonna be covering are actually a few. Uh we have basically the last conversation that is pending here. We also have uh, um unreal conditionals, which of course has to do with situations that are simply um imaginary situations. And we also have antonyms. That's uh, quite an interesting topic because, of course, you know, we um, lit need to learn about um, how to use or when to use antonyms and, of course, synonyms. English, as any other language, is basically a buildup of thousands and thousands of words. And, of course, amongst the, those words, we're going to find Synonyms and antonyms. Synonyms, in case you guys didn't know, are words that have a similar meaning, uh, one and the other. As for example, um, when you say buy and shop, you know, when you go shopping, you're also buying things. So then you have a similar word for those two. Um, there is also uh, the mention of, for example, synonyms between um, or well, there's a, a, a like a synonymical um, relationship between the words um, bag and envelope. You know, those two are also sort of similar. So um, as those, we have many, many other words that share some sort of meaning and have like, you know, some resemblance when it comes to, um, well, to talking about them. So that's in, of course, in um in referring to synonyms now antonyms are completely the opposite so when something is for example bright an antonym of something bright will be something dark when something is happy an antonym of something happy could be angry or it could also be sad so antonyms are basically the contrary of something so when you have an antonym you know you're talking about that you're talking about having uh, like contrasting details or something that uh, basically is a contrast between um, two different things. So those are, uh, once again, antonyms. And, well, as I said, we're going to be trying to find them out. And then the last topic, if, of course, we have the chance to go ahead and cover it, is going to be past models. Like, how are we supposed to use models in the past and the different uses, of course, that we have for models in the past. Now, that's, of course, part of the topic. Um, as the practice that we normally have, um, we are going to be talking right now about uh, the weekends. So that's going to be, well, not the artist, your weekends. So we're going to ha go ahead and see how the weekend went. And uh, yeah, we are all going to have a chance. Now, just something to add before we go ahead and talk about it, is that this weekend felt a little bit longer because, you know, we had the advantage of um, finishing the classes when they were supposed to be on Tuesday, I mean, Thursday. So, yeah, we had a longer weekend, at least perceptibly, it was a little bit longer. And uh, I feel like, you know, it has been quite, quite some time. But still, we are here. So, you know, some time has gone by. And let's see how it went. Let's start by hearing from Rodrigo Hernandez. In your case, Rodrigo, how was your weekend? Hello. 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 Hello.
que lo que lo Rodrigo Hernández. Yeah, um, I just I was just wondering, how was your weekend? Okay. Did you watch any movie while being at home? Huh. Okay, well, that's what you get. Well, yeah, well, kids' movies are basically the staple nowadays. You know, when when you have kids, you have to accommodate to what they want. So, of course, it's part of... Well, I mean, it's a movie after all, you know, uh, as far as you have something to do. So yeah, that's nice. I mean, spending some time with the family, you know, staying at home. It's always, uh, I think, an amazing way of spending the weekend. Um, Because, yeah, you have the chance to, like, you know, be home, be with the family. And um, I don't know, in your case, I understand that you had a chance to, like, be with your kids as well. So that's pretty cool. It's a, it's a great thing, you know, to have. Now. How about in the case of uh, the other Rodrigo, Rodrigo Mendoza? How about you, Rodrigo? How was your weekend? Hi, teacher. Good evening. Mm -hmm. uh, in my case, I had a, a good uh, weekend uh, because I rest uh, uh, all, all Saturday, for example. Uh, only work four hours uh, from... from a a.m. to um, 1 p.m. o'clock, uh, mm -hmm. five hour, hours. Mm -hmm. uh, after work, I only rest in my house. Uh, when I stay in my house, I prefer watch uh, Netflix, uh, different movies. Uh, for example, uh, scare movies. <laughs> I, I like the scare movies, uh, but I prefer scare movies in the... Uh, at night, for example. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, in the the next day, for example, in the Sunday, um, get up until late because the the other days in the week in the weekdays, mm -hmm. I I the, I get up uh, at five a.m. o'clock, and for this reason, I decide to get up. Uh, Later uh, on Sunday. Later on Sunday, uh, in the um, in the afternoon, uh, go go no went with my girlfriend mm -hmm. at a restaurant, uh, at night, and only teacher, but mm -hmm. I enjoy my my weekend. Okay, yeah, sounds you know sounds like a great experience. Um, of course, having some time off when you get to enjoy your you know your time. Uh, being at home and, and just, you know, watching movies or series is, of course, a great time. So, uh, great. It's nice to know that, you know, you had a chance to um, to spend your weekend resting and um, having a good time to some extent. So, that's cool. That's pretty, pretty cool. Um, so, do, I understand that you normally work Saturdays, right? Like, you have, like, long hours on Saturdays, Rodrigo? Uh, yes. For example, this, this month, uh, mm -hmm. October... Mm -hmm. um, usually work Saturday and the next month uh, is, is different because I work on Sunday and my day off uh, the the next well, the next month in and Saturday for example uh, I change my day off uh, mm -hmm. the next uh, month. So you you um only have one day off, a week? Yes, yeah, so only only one. One and a half, I understand, probably or no. Yes, but I I prefer to two week off, a uh, day off. Sorry, mm -hmm. uh, because I rest much, for example. But um, it's it's fine. Okay, cool. And sorry, I'm sorry, I I just don't remember. What's the account that you work for again? 
Um, I work for a call center. Uh, the account is Volaris. It's a airline. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but the account is Spanish and English. But oh, in cool. this moment, I say in, in, in Spanish. That's nice. So it's a, yes. it's only calls or do you also have like chat or email? Uh, no, I, I I don't take a call. Um, I listen the call because I am a quality oh, analyst. Oh, so you're, you're QA. Yes, ah. but, but only only calls in Spanish, right? Ah, so you're one <laughs> of those. Yes. Por uno ustedes me salí yo. <laughs> for this reason oh. i decided to learn english teacher but oh, so, so, you know, that. so now you want to be a qa in english oh, okay i understand <laughs> yeah that's great i mean um yeah i was asking you because um actually my sister she just started um you know a training with telus she's going to be working with um what you might call it? It's the Fortnite account. So she's gonna be, you know, doing chat, but still, it's um a little bit of a challenge because, well, that's not actually her field because she studied laws, but you know, she learned English from me, and now, well, she's starting that journey. So I was asking because um, you work for who? Concentrix or what's the the call center or is it directly Volaris? Uh, uh Volaris is uh. No, I work uh, for Concentrix, oh, okay. uh, Web Help Concentrix. Uh -huh. And then the account is Polaris. Union, yes. Uh -huh. And the account is Polaris. Oh, cool. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. I heard, I've heard that, you know, uh, those two are some of the best in the country, uh, Concentrix and, and Telus. So pretty cool. Yeah. That's that's nice. All right. Great. Um, Thank you. Thank you very much, QA. Okay. How about... <laughs> In the case of, no sé si sabe que así se le dice, o así nos referimos en inglés. Sí, sí. Ah, okay, sí. Okay. Me imagino que también en español así lo dicen. Es como QA, más que todo. Ajá, sí, el QA. Sí, sí uh -huh. por lo general así es el QA. Lo que se quiebra en el bono. Bueno, sí. ok. <laughs> so, um, how about Jared? In your case, Jared, how was your weekend? Good evening. Good evening. Uh, on the weekend, I like to go for a walk with my son, mm -hmm. visit a park, uh, or take him out to eat. I also like to visit uh, with him some places on the uh, flower route, Ruta de las Flores, mm, such yeah. as Mayuga, Paneca, or Los Naranjos. Well, that's cool. Nice. Very nice. And it's great that, you know, the roads in La Ruta de las Flores are now, like, renovated, or most of them are renovated. So, yeah, it's not as dangerous as I remember it used to be before because um, the roads are much better now. Um, one place that I have never been, or at least I don't remember that I have been in our country, is Los Naranjos. I dream of going there. I have heard that, you know, it's it's pretty cool. Um, I have been to most of the towns in, in La Ruta de las Flores, but I haven't really been to... To Los Aranjos, but um, yeah, I, I have had some great times. I do remember that the first time I went to La Ruta, um, Apaneca wasn't still, you know, that good. Like they did have the church, they did have um, the what the, the 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 food plaza, but they didn't have uh, um the thing that they have now. It's a finca, I think. But yeah, they didn't have that. So, but now. It has changed a lot. I haven't been there in quite a while, but uh, it's great. You know, having some time to spend with your son or your family in general is always going to be a great time or an amazing way of spending your weekend. So pretty cool. Um, Raul, in your case, I noticed that you took away the uh, only listeners um, badge. So how about you, Raul? In your case, how was your weekend? Hi, coach. Good evening. Evening. Uh, well, my... My my last week uh, weekend was uh, heavy because uh, in the morning the Saturday in the morning mm -hmm. I was buying with my sister the supermarket mm -hmm. and 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 also when I was in my house the my my um, este my boss uh, call, uh, called me. Because in in the company uh, had a problem about the the electronic um, 
facture uh, uh, invoice uh, electronic invoice mm -hmm. because okay. my company uh, 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 in, my, in my company uh, implements it the uh, invoice uh, electronic invoice mm -hmm. but uh, but the Saturday uh, 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 the Saturday had a problem and I and I had to work uh, to 12 uh, p.m. Mm -hmm. and, and after, and after um, uh, I I went with my with my sister uh, to uh, with my uh, to um, uh, de la Gran Vía oh. and I and I and I and we were uh, we were seeing the different uh, things but uh, in the in the light I I had to connect to, to my to my to my job because I I had to to uh, I I had to worry about uh, other other things mm -hmm. and uh, so in the Sunday uh, I was I was uh, the the Sunday was uh, quiet because with my family uh, went to the church and the and the in the in the uh, in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. I I went I to 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 um uh, La Gran Vía uh, e and and I ate a uh, a uh, ice cream and 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 the and the Saturday in the night um mm -hmm. I I was uh, watching the TV and uh, and and other videos in in my cell phone and that's it oh cool very good yeah that sounds you know like a pretty complete description of the weekend and also sounds like you know it was yeah as you said you were coming and going like yeah you were doing a lot of things um so yeah great i mean it's it's nice that at least you you know you had uh or got some time to spend with the family going to la gran Vía because yeah, that's that's a great a great thing um in my case, I did start my weekend in a kind of weird way because I was, as I was sharing with Rodrigo before, uh, my sister, she just started our training. So on Friday, we had to go to San Salvador to pick up the, the whole equipment. And um, yeah, it was it was quite an experience because we had to wait for a long, long time. But still, you know, it's part of the process. And um, yeah, actually, I was glad that, you know, we had the class um, or the, like the regular uh, week class on 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 last week last week, cause yeah on Friday I think I was not gonna be able to teach you know if if I was like uh, I had a class um after I came back I would have not be been able to be here cause I was basically destroyed um but then Saturday went well um I didn't really remember uh what I did. oh yeah I went to work. So yeah, I spent basically the whole day working on air conditioning systems. So that's cool, you know, um, with the eclipse and everything, I was out there working and uh, that was Saturday for Sunday. Uh, well, Sunday started quiet and not, oh yeah. And I also had a date with my girlfriend at night, Saturday night. Um, I started quiet. Everything was great. Uh, but then my mother-in-law, if you know, or my girlfriend's mom, she started feeling unwell and she kind of like, she kind of got into like an allergy thing and it was pretty rough because she ended up going to the hospital. So yesterday I basically spent most of my afternoon and night um, at the hospital and she had to like, you know, spend the night tonight. She's also in um, the hospital. So yeah, it has been quite quite a thing. Like for example, today I was doing all sorts of things, like you know, going here, going there. Um, so yeah, it has been kind of crazy. But still, it's great that you know we are here and we are ready to get started. Now, um, I think that we are going to go ahead and get to work because um uh, we have many things to cover. And as I said, it would be of course ideal. Maybe, maybe we will have a chance. To wrap it up tonight. Now, remember, this week is the last one that we have to get the work done. So that means that this is, of course, the last week or the last chance that we're going to have to go ahead and basically finish the whole um, situation with 
all the exercises and everything in the platform. So if you guys happen to have any questions regarding that, regarding um, any of the exercises, or if you have had issues with any of the exercises, it would be lovely, you know, if you have the chance to like share that and then we can go ahead and work it together so that we can find a solution for it. Still, if you don't have any doubts, well, that's amazing as well. I hope that you are um, about to be done or even done because I know that many of you are, pro are probably uh, done by now. You have already finished your work uh, in the platform. So that will be an amazing thing as well. But um, let's see. Let's get uh, and go ahead to work on this. Now, this has to do a lot with the topic that we were covering last Friday. I asked you a question about it. Um, like, what would you do, you know, if you had this amount of money? Now, here, it is pretty simple. It is, um, if I found 700, I'm sorry, $750,000, what would I do? What would I do if I found that amount of money? Now, I want to know, in your cases, what would you do with that money? If you found, if you simply just start off a sudden, you had 700 and uh, um, fifty thousand dollars. What would be the first thing that you will buy? Or mention one thing that you will buy with seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I want to hear, and let's get started. Uh, hearing from Harit. In your case, Harit, what would you do? What would you buy if you had seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars? Uh, I will buy a property and it's only one thing and, uh, only one thing oh, well, a, yeah. pro a property a property okay a property okay great great um how about in the case of Raul if you had seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars what would you do with them what would be the, that thing that you would do with them mm. I I would buy a new house, for example. Okay, cool. Yeah, that sounds nice. Mm -hmm. Um, how about in the case of uh, Blanca? How about you, Blanca? If you had, if you found all of a sudden, or maybe someone by mistake, um, was to deposit you, you know, this amount of money, seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, what would you do with that money? Mm, I would buy a big house. Okay, that sounds lovely. How about in the case of uh, Rodrigo Hernandez? What would you do, Rodrigo, if you, uh, you know, found that uh, you now have seven hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars? Go to to the beach with my family. Mm -hmm. and to put a quilt. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay. Well, if I was you, I would pick, you know, maybe buying a house at by the beach. You know, that would be something more like, you know, uh, big. But still, you have your idea. So nice. Very nice. How about in the case of Ever? How about you, Ever? What would you do if you found that now you have $750,000? Well, I will buy would buy property and travel to many destinations. Okay. Well, if we had the chance only to do one, I will say that we will keep, you know, the property thing. Um, how about Rodrigo? In your case, Rodrigo Mendoza, what would you do if you found seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars? Uh, in my case, I would like uh, repair my house, for example, or buy a new house. Okay. Great repairing your house or probably rebuilding your house, you know, or um, buying a new one. Good. Very good. And in the case of um, Karen, what would you do, Karen, with um, $750,000? Hello. Good night. In the night. Um, I will buy a beach house. Yeah. First thing that I do. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Um, if I was the one, you know, who got that uh, amount of money, what I would like to do is that I would like to start my own business. Like I didn't have an idea of what I want to do. Um, so yeah, what I would do is that, um, finally getting started with my, um, 
I know that I it's I sound like I, I sound like I'm traumatized by the topic, but I don't know. It's simply that a restaurant. No, not right. That was that was not the first thing that came to mind. It would be okay. an idea. It would be because yeah, I would love to have a restaurant, but no, an air conditioning store. I know that I sound traumatized, but I feel like in that area I found my cup of tea. Like I have, I actually found you know something that I love to do. So mm -hmm. yeah, I would like to have a store that um you know I would like to sell products and sell equipments as well. So yeah, that's what I would like to do. That's my current dream. I know I uh, that we you know we always have like dreams or things that um change over time, but in my case that would be my current dream, you know, having one of those stores. But still, um sounds, you know, as uh we all have an idea of what we would do. Now, let's see what these people in the conversation are going to do. We have Phil and Pat. Those are the two people taking part in the conversation. And this is what they say they would do if they ever found uh, that amount of money. Um, so we have, um, look at this. Some guy found 750,000. He returned it uh, and the owner simply thanked him with a phone call. You're kidding? If I found $750,000, I wouldn't return it so fast. Why? What would you do? Well, I'll go straight to the mall and spend it. I could buy lots of nice clothes and jewelry. Someone might also find out about it. And then you could go to jail. Hmm. You've got a point there. Okay, now, let's discuss this for a minute. Because I know that, you know, part of the language is also, is also has to do with, um, like, talking. Do you think you can go to jail just because you found money what would you say would you say it's fair you know that you went to jail just because you found money and decided to spend it would you say that it's fair or not and may i want i would like to hear maybe from um raul cree usted que sea justo raul que lo manden a prisión solo porque se encontró dinero y se lo gastó mm. no okay mm. and why not <laughs> I am I am uh, thinking about is I believe that uh, maybe because I I I can imagine that the other uh, the other uh, the the person uh, the, uh, lost the, a lot of money and and I I I don't believe that he, Justo en inglés, teacher. Fair, fair. fair. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. I don't believe that is uh, is fair that other people that uh, that um, uh, found a lot of money uh, can uh, can enjoy the, uh, the money and the people that lost them the money. That that the that, that the person was difficult uh, earn the money. Uh, the person uh, cannot uh, enjoy the, uh, his money, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. From that perspective, of course, you know it has a lot to do with like um, how fair it could be and whether you deserve to have that amount of money or whether you simply was a lucky dog and you. You, you know you found it now um what do you think karen in your case do you think it's fair to go to jail because you found some money i mean this amount of money i don't think it's fair um for the person who found it but it happened to me once years yeah. ago i opened an account in uh, the vivienda i think and i just leave it open i forgot about the account um, but then I had to request to open a new account and I found that I had a previous account and I check all my statements and I saw that somebody um, put in my account $50,000 wow. and I said, what? So they put it and they take it. 
Mm -hmm. And now, uh, well, my mother it was so scary because probably, and it was from Mexico. That deposit it was from Mexico. Oh my God! <laughs> so my mother it was so scary because you know uh, yeah. we don't know mm -hmm. where that money was coming from. Mm -hmm. So I closed that account and I decided to open a new one. So um, yeah, it's unfair, but probably you can go to jail because you don't know where that money is coming it's from. Coming from, yeah. yeah. I don't think that, you know, well, my perspective, simply by finding money, I mean, this is uh, different because, yeah, then you got like the, um, the the money deposited to you and you have a way of like tracing, you know, where it came from or mm -hmm. sort of. Um, but if you simply, well, there is a story here uh, in my neighborhood. Um, there was a, one man, you know, he was like a simple man, an everyday man. Um, he was, um, uy, no, <laughs> journalist le iba a decir. No, he was a farmer, porque journalist, por jornalero. He was yeah. a farmer and uh, he owned, I think, like two tractors. So, I mean, he was like a, you know, upcomer uh, farmer. But the thing is that he was doing business here and there. So he was always moving money around. And one time, he sold some property, I think. But he had around 500,000 colones on a bag, simply on a, on a backpack. You know, one of those old backpacks that, um, you know, men mm -hmm. um, used to used to wear, the ones that are um, made out of line. So those, those ones, you know, the very old ones. So as he knew that people knew that he was doing business, he never wanted or liked to carry his bag. So he was almost always, you know, like making somebody else do it. Um, by that time, they said that he had already done something that was sort of incredible because he went to a store in San Miguel where they sold um, tractors. And I mean, as I said, he was a simple man. He will wear, you know, as basic as possible. So he entered there and nobody looked at him. Like the rest of the people were expecting, you know, you expect someone who is going to buy a, a tractor to like at least, mm -hmm. you know, get off of a, a, a nice car and everything. A wealthy, right? Yeah, he wealthy arrived there in by bus. So he was no one, basically. He bought a tractor. He came back here with the, the newest tractor possible and everything. So that time when he sold the property, he was like, I, I don't want to risk it. I don't want to take this, this money with me. So I'm going to give this back to someone else. And he found someone who he trusted and gave him the bag. Now, the problem was that the other guy, he was a drunk. Um, so he took the bag. He went to a store. He got a couple beers. He didn't know what he has. He simply took the bag and, you know, he was doing his job, simply taking the bag. He didn't know anything about it. Um, so he went to the store. He got some beers. Then he forgot the bag as, as it wasn't his. So, you know, he forgot it. And the next day, the men saw the other man, the, 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 the wealthy guy or the, the money owner saw the other guy and asked him, like, where's the bag? And he said, I don't remember. <laughs> so he had left it at the store. Then he kind of got an idea, you know. He asked him, like, trace you back to where you went. Like, where did you go with it? Or when, when was the last time you remember seeing or having the bag by you? And he said, at Blanca's store. So he went, to, the, the owner of the money went to Blanca's. And this Blanca woman... She saw the bag there. She didn't open it. She simply got the bag and threw it on the garbage. So all that money, 500,000 colones. I know that by today's standards, it's maybe not that much, but this is supposed to have happened like 40 years ago. So back then, this was a, a huge amount of money. So he threw it on the garbage and she was about to let it on. So she was about to, to like burn the, the garbage when the owner of the money got there and he was like hey so this guy was here yesterday he said that you know he got drunk here and he was carrying a bag have you seen it and she was like yeah it's over there uh, on the garbage so the men went picked up the bag and the bag had everything you know all the money is still there so he said that he was um grateful well, i mean they say that he was grateful because he found it and uh, he gave the, the lady, I think it was like a thousand colones. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if it's true because, as I said, uh, 
this is supposed to be one of my friend's grandpa, the one who did that. But uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's it's kind of crazy how sometimes, you know, we do and find things like that. But yeah. the thing is, I don't think it will be fair that, that simply by finding the money, you know, let's say that uh, you're walking um, on the street and you find a bag, you pick up the bag and you find out that it has a lot of money in it. By simply by finding the money, you will go to jail. I don't think it's no. fair. It would be unfair, of course. I mean, it would be fair if in that case that I just told you about, um, the woman, you know, had opened the bag and saw that he had money there. And he knew or she got decided to get the money or like keep the money when the men came and asked her. Because when she when he asked her, well, you know, she didn't know what was in the bag. So she simply told him, it's over there, it's on the garbage. But if she had known and she had gotten the money and she hadn't, you know, um, decided to give it back to him, maybe then mm -hmm. I would say that it would be, you know, fair to persecute someone because she is keeping the money. She knows that she has the money and she's keeping it for her. Maybe then. Because, yeah, in my case, well, I I do remember one time. It was like 10 years ago, basically, because I was I was around 16 when I when that happened. Um, I went to, to the to El Super. It was on december 25th or january 1st i remember it was around you know christmas it was one of those two days and i think it was the 25th because yeah i do remember now where i spent the money the thing is that i went to a super and i was simply trying to gather something because of course on the 25th it's it's lonely like nobody is cooking there is no tortillas there is nothing around so i went to a super and and um when i was about to pay as i was getting close to the cashier I don't know why, but I got this eager that I wanted a chocolate. But on the aisle that I was making line, there were no chocolates. So I had to change the aisle. When I went to the chocolate aisle, I saw something green laying down on the floor. So I leaned on and grabbed it. I saw that it was a $20 bill. So there came a big decision. And every time I tell this, it's like, I wonder. What would have happened if I had told the guard, you know, the, the, the guy who was there, um, if I had told him that I have found the money, what would he have done? Because the thing is... You mean the cashier or the the other, the person in front of you? No, the guard. Because, yeah, the, the thing is that there was no one in front of me in that aisle. Okay, ah. So that aisle was, was closed. So and there was no one there. Because if I had seen someone in front of me, I will have, you know, I I will have told that person, like, is it yours? But there yeah. was no one. That was lonely. Basically, well, not even on the cashier line. There was no one there either. Mm -hmm. I was, it was simply lonely. So I'm talking about the guard, you know, the, the guy who is like at the door. So what would have happened mm. if I have asked him, like, do you know who threw this money? I think he, he will have done the same thing that I did. Yeah. Because I, I kept it, you know, I kept it for me. I, yeah. I remember that I, I spent it on cuetes for the 31st. <laughs> but the thing is that, you know, I didn't know whose, whose money yeah. it was. So I simply saw it there. It, look, it was simply mm -hmm. there. It was, it was <laughs> basically under the cashier. So I was like, eh, well, bad luck to them. And yeah. So in the same way, I remember one time I found $5. I was um, crossing the bridge on my bicycle and I looked down and I saw the five dollars and I was like, okay, I'm gonna pick them up. And it was in San Miguel. Yeah, but it was in a, a, a in a so San Miguel. Probably to visit Blanca's store. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I should I should try to find a Blanca store around me. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that'll be cool. But yeah, I mean, I think that there are ways in which you know you could be persecuted just by finding this amount of money. Um, but normally, like simply by finding it, I don't think it will be fair to like, you know, persecute someone or like take it to a legal ground. But still, um, it's a great idea. It's it's something that, you know, we have to like consider and talk about because, yeah, like what will happen? So that's where we also get the idea for this thing over here, which is unreal conditional sentences. So things that are simply imaginary, things that are not necessarily true. And things that simply come to mind as possibilities. Now, when do we use them? Well, they are used with or on real conditional sentences describing imaginary situations with 
simple past forms and consequences in the present. So this is basically something about the past, like if, if it would have happened and what would you do? So that's why it includes past and present. Now, this is the structure in which you would be able to like um, build up the sentence. What would you do? So that's basically what it states that it is unreal. Okay, what would you do? That's basically um, a rule. If we, if we were talking about math, it will be part of the rule. It will be part of the process, of course. No one will be able to take this part away. What would you do? Eso sí en prestaría en una pregunta que tenga que hacer eh, con una condicional surrealista. ¿sí? What would you do if, well, actually to the if part. What would you do if? And then here is where you can change, you know, the question. You can make it, of course, as crazy as possible. And I want you to think about that. I want you to create sentences or examples of questions that are about unreal situations. So do that while you listen to the rest of the explanation. Because, yeah, I would like to get to here and think about your craziest ideas, okay? Well, what are your craziest ideas when it comes to unreal situations? Then, what would you do if you found, this is the example, $750,000. So, yeah, what would you do then? Um, then we have, um, to answer this, we are going to have to use a conditional, which is, in this case, if. Um, then, of course, we are going to use a subject, depending on what the subject has to be, and a verb that corresponds to the verb in the question. Because this, as I said, is part of the formula. What would you do if? That's part of the formula. But then you found. The found is the main verb in the sentence or the main verb in the question. So here I will have to use, of course, the verb that corresponds to this one. So if I found $750,000, that's where you state the unreal condition. And then you say, of course, this is also unreal, but this is you know, the result or the outcome or the consequence of your actions, it will be. Um, you can go, of course, as I said, as creative as possible, as crazy as possible. I wouldn't go as straight to the mall. So if I found $750,000, I wouldn't, I, sorry, I would or I'll, see, I would or I'll go as straight to the mall. So that's the first idea that this person has, you know, I'll go straight to the mall. See, iría directo al centro comercial. That's the first idea. Then. I could buy lots, lots of nice clothes and jewelry. I could buy lots of, of nice clothes and jewelry. So that's another idea, you know, buying lots of nice clothes and jewelry. Or I might go to the police. Might. And notice here, this um this model verb might is the least possible. When you use this, it's like the you know the least possible situation because this one this one is basically one that doesn't depend on you. I told you um before that when you use might, it's normally used with things that do not necessarily lay on you or you, you are like the main person in charge of doing this. So might is the least possible. I might go to the police. Entonces podría ir a la policía. I might, you know, it's but it's not my first idea. Or I wouldn't return it so fast. I wouldn't return it so fast. I think that if I found that amount of money, this is what I would do. I wouldn't really return it so fast. You know, I would like wait to see if like is if there's anyone around me like trying to find the money. Um, because I know that I mean this amount is is a lot. So yeah. If I, of course, after I don't know, a year or so, I don't find anyone, you know, trying to um to like get a hold of this money again. Well, then I will realize that, you know, they simply don't care. Because I think I feel like a year is, you know, like an average sign that you could give it a wait um, for someone to start, like, I don't know, publishing ads on the, on the news or, or on the newspaper to, like, try to find this amount of money. But if people don't do that, well, then I will simply say, okay, they don't care. And then I will start to do whatever I want to do. So, yeah, but still, I feel like, you know, um, as good civilians, as good as good people as we are, of course, spending this amount, if you ever found it, it would be crazy. But uh, still, um, your ideas are not that bad, you know, getting a house, that's basically everyone's dream, you know, getting a, a, a nicer house or a nice house. Um, but yeah, but now 
I want to hear your examples. Quiero saber cuáles son sus ejemplos para estas preguntas eh, surreales. ¿sí? ¿Cuál sería una pregunta surreal que ustedes le pueden hacer a alguien? Estos son básicamente preguntas que se utilizan para iniciar una conversación. O sea, ese es como el objetivo principal de las um, Unreal Conditionals. Son, son simplemente, o sea, preguntas que nacen, qué sé yo, en una reunión y ustedes, o sea, quieren iniciar, ¿verdad? Un debate, una conversación un tanto extensa con diferentes puntos de vista, pues este sería como el caso para poder iniciarlo. Una Unreal Conditional Sentence where you simply state something barely impossible But, you know, that would make people kind of show who they are to some extent. But I want to hear your examples. Uh, maybe we can start by hearing from Haret. In your case, Haret, do you have an example with an unreal conditional sentence? Okay, if not, I will give you another one, one that just came to my mind. Uh, this is my example. So what would you do if you crashed on a police officer? What would you would be your first reaction if you ever um, do this, this sort of action? So what would you do if you crashed on a police officer? Or a police cruiser, let's say. Porque el officer suena muy, como muy directo hacia la gente. A police cruiser. Cuando hablamos de un police cruiser, estamos hablando de un auto de policía. So, what would you do if you crashed on a police cruiser? Um, that's my example, okay? That's an, an idea that I had. And I simply don't know what I would do. I will simply, I don't know, and commend myself to my, um, I don't know, my ancestors. Because, yeah, I know I'm not. I'm not getting out of that alive. So yeah, what would you do if you crashed on a police cruiser? Um, now, your examples, what are they going to be? What is the idea that you have for an unreal conditional sentence? Um, maybe in the case of uh, Mr. Mendoza, Rodrigo, do you have an example of an unreal conditional sentence you can provide us? Um, for example, teacher, uh... What would you like to do Friday at night? That's a proposition. That's an offer. Eso es como una oferta. En este caso es, what would you do if? El if es la parte importante. Sí. En cambio usted dijo, what would you like to do on Friday at night? Eso es una oferta. Es como que le estoy ofreciendo. ¿Qué te gustaría hacer? O sea, eso no necesariamente es surreal, sino que es, Um, simplemente una proposición, ¿sí? ¿Qué te gustaría hacer? En cambio aquí, lo que le hace surreal es este if, ahí. What would you do if? Por eso les decía que esto es como matemáticas, ¿sí? Um, o sea, que en matemáticas había, ¿verdad? Ecuaciones donde no podíamos quitar partes de la ecuación porque si no, ya no era esa ecuación. Entonces, what would you do if? ¿Sí? ¿Qué harías? Sí. Y ahí, por ejemplo, qué sé yo, uh, what would you do if I kiss you at the movies? O sea, estamos hablando, qué sé yo, con alguien que recién conocimos o... Um, bueno, en mi caso, no lo haría porque no lo haría, pero sería divertido quizás decirle esto a mi mejor amiga. O sea, no sé qué hiciera porque no sé, pero igual. It would be funny. Because, yeah, what would you do if I kiss you at the movies? We never go to the movies. We never see one another, actually. But the thing is that, yeah. Um, the, the idea is simply to say something, you know, that will be out of the regular. Something that is not... Um, common something very uncommon uh let's see maybe we can get an example for, oh yes had it what would you what would you do if you won the lottery there you go that's something unreal what would you do if you won um the lottery okay Now, I will also get to ask, for example, um, hmm, here's one that is going to be funny. What would you do if our national team becomes world champion? Our national soccer team. 
So what would you do if our national soccer team becomes world champions? ¿Qué harías si, se, si nuestra selecta se convirtiera en campeona del mundo? What would you do? You know, that, that's, that's something very unreal. Talking about unreal things, that is very, probably the most unreal that I have uh, um, come up with. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, how about in the case of... Uh, Karen, do you have any idea of an unreal question? Unreal conditional question? Uh, yes. What would you do if you... If no, what would you do if if Elon Musk offered to give you anything you want? Hmm. Okay. This I do have an answer for this because this <laughs> has been something that I have been dreamed of for a long time. Of Actually. Course. Yeah, what, a, a long time ago, I was, you know, this close from um sending him an email asking him to open, you know, a Jika factory here in El Salvador. I don't want money. I want, you know, a, a job or job for people. So, yeah, I was this close because I know that he's looking for um qualified, you know, um handcraft. So, yeah, I was very close from doing that. So if he will offer me to do anything that I want, I will ask him to open a Jigger factory here for my community so that San Miguel will start being, you know, the great city that it deserves to be. Um, so yeah, that would be my my desire if I ever get, you know, to ask something from him. Um, because yeah, I mean, why not? Why not having a big industry here in our country yeah. and here in my region? So yeah, instead of asking something just for me, I would like to ask, you know, for for my people. And then of course, of course, I will become um okay. <laughs> yeah i will become i don't know the mayor probably here so yeah <laughs> you know but yeah that would be my my idea what would you ask him if you had the, that the chance probably money mm -hmm. okay yeah yeah i'm not sure about the amount uh, but yes money money okay great in yeah. million <laughs> uh, i will i will ask a few something <laughs> <laughs> something crazy talking about things that are crazy um something crazy that i that i thought of a while ago is what will happen this is never going to happen of course but what will happen if you ever got you know a deposit for a week of money's worth um for neymar i don't know how if you guys have any idea of how much he earns a week but some reports say that he is basically earning two million dollars a week So it's like, dude, in a week, these people are solving, you know, like yeah. what we will wish to have in our lifetime. So just one week, just, just one just, week, just one week, <laughs> one week of his work. So that's yeah. something that I would love, you know, if, if I was to ask someone for money, it would be Neymar. I will ask him like, you know, just just a week, bro. What is it going to be? <laughs> just, just a week. Come yeah. on. It's not that much. But yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy how some countries, you know, do these sort of things for people. Like, yeah. they're simply people. But yeah, the other day, I was reading an article about, like, all the amenities that he has just to work for the team that he, he or to play for the team that he plays for. And he has, like, seven drivers assigned to him. It's like, what? His house has around 30 rooms. And he's like, what? It's basically a hotel. So yeah, it's like, it is. I don't know. It's just crazy, mm -hmm. you know, how, how some people live. So, yeah, but still, Elon, give me some jobs. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, okay. How about uh, one more? Let's see. Anyone has one more crazy question? Maybe now, Rodrigo, maybe now you have a clearer idea of what will be an unreal um, question that you may ask on the unreal conditional, Rodrigo Mendoza. Uh, yes, teacher. Okay. Uh, for example, what would you do if uh, you learn English? Hmm. What would you do if you learned English? Aquí le voy a cambiar esto. Vamos a cambiarle learn for mastered. 
if you mastered English? What would you do if you mastered? Master, of course, means that you know you have learned it to the to the highest level possible. So, what would you do if you mastered English? Um, well, I don't know what I would do because I always say that you know in my case, I'm I I always consider that I'm still learning. Like there are still tons and tons of things about languages that we can find out. Uh, but probably, hmm, starting a podcast. You know, having a great accent would be a, a nice idea, like starting a podcast. Um, however, though, the other day I had an interview with a guy from Canada and uh, I felt I felt glad when he told me that he barely noticed an accent in me. That was pretty cool because I was like, OK, that, that feels great. You know, he was like, like, what are you from? Like, did you ever live in the U.S.? And I was like, eh? for 10 months. But yeah, that, that felt pretty, pretty great. Okay, now let's see one more, one more question. Ever, Ever Moreno, in your case, can you think of one um, real conditional question that you may ask? Or maybe Raul, Raul Ramirez, do you have any idea of an unreal conditional question you may ask? Um... What would you do if you were in a paranor paranormal event? Hmm. I was actually wondering that myself like an hour ago. Because, um, yeah, I had to go and feed my, my, my girlfriend's dogs. And I was turning off all the lights in her house. And I was like, I have never been here alone at night. That's the, the only thing that came to my mind. And I'm scared of her dad. Her dad passed away like four years ago. Um, so as I was closing the door, the last door, I thought, oh my God, I'm here alone. Like with everything is everything is dark. So what am I gonna do if I hear anything? I don't know what I would do. I have never actually experienced anything like did like this. I have heard, you know, stories. Um, uh, but yeah, I wanna know your opinion. In your case, Raul, what would you do? If you ask this, maybe you have an answer. What would you do if you ever find yourself living in a paranormal event? Mm, I would, I would do a. I, I would, I would be quiet because uh, uh, sometimes I. Oh, oh okay, um. And. Seldom, uh, seldom, or sometimes I don't know. Mm -hmm. I I have lived a, a paranormal experience because I don't know, but uh sometimes I I feel that in my in my room mm -hmm. the door in the closet in in for example I when I when I go to sleep. Mm -hmm. The door closet is 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 closed, but the 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 morning the next day and in the morning, the my door close uh, the my, the door in my closet is open. It's now open. Mm. Yes, but I don't know uh, I don't know the why because because I I don't I don't wake uh, I wake up um uh, in the uh, I I don't I don't wake up at um early mm -hmm. because I I wake up uh, to six or six thirty I am but sometimes I I I don't I don't know uh, what uh, what uh, what happened because uh, because um uh, happened it is uh, it is uh, this thing. Mm -hmm. okay now that's that's weird you know i will be scared honestly now sometimes i even get scared here like for example i have a chair right here back in the day i used to have a, a like a dark towel over there so while i was teaching you know i was seeing only my white background and sometimes i will see flares of that like if i move my hand here um now don't you you don't see it because it's basically always is like a clear color uh but like i don't know a couple of months ago, I will have a darker towel back there and I will see it sometimes. And I will like, oh, my God. So I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just a scary guy. 
Um, but yeah, the other day, um, you know, the, the office where my girlfriend works, she was like alone there for a while because the rest of the lawyers, they went to do like other things. Uh, but the thing is that she heard some steps on the second floor. Like she heard like someone was like walking on the second floor. And my sister, she also used to work in the same office. And she says that, you know, that's something common that happens there. Like, like that happens almost every time that someone is left alone there. So what she did was simply calling me, you know, she called me and like she video called me and um, like we did, we, we stayed on a call for almost two hours till like somebody came back because she was really, really scared. And she's one of those, you know, that gets scared very easily. But still, those are unreal situations, things that, you know, are barely impossible. However, it doesn't mean that they are not like, for example, maybe in a week or two, I'm going to tell you, guys, I got a job with Elon Musk. Anyway, so um, thank you guys very much for your attention tonight. And thank you for your great participations. Um, tomorrow, we're going to continue and uh, basically wrap it, a wrap it all up with the topics, you know, the topics and the exercises. But for now, all I have to do is simply thank you and wish you an amazing rest of your evening and see you tomorrow. So bye-bye for now. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Okay. Bye-bye.